We all do puja together for the holy mountain of uh, Sagamatha and uh, we request him to, you know, let us come uh, to Sagamatha and let us summit the peak. Breaking news coming in, a severe earthquake has hit Nepal. It's the worst quake to hit the eastern Himalayas in 80 years. A magnitude 7.9 killer that struck 83 kilometers northwest of Kathmandu. And far away from Kathmandu, the expedition Everest base camp, right in the middle of the busy climbing season. Quake triggered a massive avalanche at Mount Everest. It was a shallow quake and its impact was huge. I'm not able to see anything. There are some people who are not afraid of heights. They are not afraid to face the wrath of nature. They are not even afraid of death. These are not extraordinary human beings, just ordinary people, determined to make their dream of climbing Mount Everest a reality. This is the story of such men, soldiers of the Indian Army, and their journey to the top of the world. Their plan is to summit Everest at a height of 8,848 meters and clean the mountain along the way. But does destiny have other plans? Leading the expedition is Major Ranveer Singh Jamwal, a mountaineering enthusiast who has climbed the four highest peaks across four continents and successfully summited Everest, not once, but twice. Will he be able to lead a third successful trip to Mount Everest? As we see in Asiklai, as we say so, uh, mein roti, haath mein soti, aur kadam choti choti. Joining them is the NDTV crew. What you are seeing and what the camera is seeing is a bit different. The crew includes 24-year-old Amir Rafi Pirzada, who's grown up in the mountains of Kashmir. He lost his father when he was 12, and his mother is anxious about his first trip to the Everest base camp. I'm at 7-1, because Everest is bad. Because very very short, I don't know what should happen. Okay, I'm doing nothing because I'm very sure. I don't know what to do. 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 That's ultimate photo, Liaz. The summit was important to us. Uh, the main reason was it was the 50th year of the first Indian ascent. And it wasn't easy to uh, select, you know, 30 mountaineers. And uh, we had to go through a very enduring process. We have around um, a database of 1,000 mountaineers with our Indian Army. And we uh, selected uh, initially around uh, 70 people. And from those 70, uh, we uh, did a selection training at Manali. For around one month, we were there in uh, the whole winter. Uh, we uh, ordered uh, or endured basically around minus 20 degree temperature and we went through around minus you know 10 to 15 feet of snow there and we did the summit of Friendship Peak which was the first ever winter summit of Friendship Peak and after that we selected the best 30 members uh, for the Indian Army team. In Delhi also for around three months we did our conditioning training in which uh, we did wall climbing, tent pitching exercises, uh, weight pulling exercises and a lot of other endurance building exercises. Mountaineering is a very cerebral sport, so it's just not climbing mountains. Uh, you have to prepare for it a lot uh, before climbing the mountains. 
So it's very important that the climbers are physically and mentally tough and strong. So that's what we train for. And uh, with respect to me as a doctor, I have to just take care that medically and like physically, their endurance is really up to the mark before the climb. In New Delhi, Dr. Ritesh Gol, who is part of the Indian Army's Team Everest, is busy with medical supplies and testing fitness levels of climbers. This will be his first journey to Everest Base Camp. In another part of the world, approximately 1,200 kilometers away in Nepal's Khumbu district, Ice Fall Doctors, a highly trained team of Sherpas, have begun their work, entering the deadly Khumbu Glacier. Before the climbing seasons begin in early May, these Sherpas must prepare a safe passage across the glacier to Camp 1. They fix ropes and place ladders over deep, open crevasses that have appeared between pillars of ice. This is known as the danger zone, as it is the most deadly icefall glacier in the world, cracking, breaking, and shifting after every uncertain minute, with little or no warning. In 2014, the Kumbu Icefall took the lives of 16 Sherpas, only 13 bodies were recovered. But fear has not deterred these aspiring summiteers from the Indian Army. This is also Captain P.K. Rai's first trip to Everest Base Camp. He's expected to manage the entire operation from there. The day I reported here, I was told that I'll be the base camp manager. This was the biggest challenge for me and we used the experience of the guys who have been there earlier. And we searched on the net and we took good high calorie rations with us. Very nice light equipment uh, which was uh, required in the high altitude. Good clothing. Everything was planned, market survey was done and then finally procured. Our load started four days ahead. We started for Kathmandu. It went through road to Kathmandu. The climbing team must travel through Nepal's capital city, Kathmandu, the gateway to the Himalayan kingdom and also a major tourist hub. In 1995-96, a little under 4% of the country's GDP came from tourism, but has since considerably fallen due to political unrest. Many of these tourists are mountaineers, aspiring to climb Mount Everest. The Indian Army's Team Everest resumed their tough and grueling training in Kathmandu, combined with a little sightseeing. There are various markets in Kathmandu. But for mountaineers, all roads lead to Tamil Market, also referred to as the pre-base camp for climbers. All types of climbing gear are available here, from clothes to accessories, even equipment, sleeping bags and tents, anything needed to fight absurd temperatures on the journey to Everest. Despite the intense preparation by Major John Wall and his boys, there is always a possibility of things going drastically wrong. A major stumbling block for Everest summiteers is the death zone that lies between Camp 4 and the summit, a place where you find yourself in thin air. Here, over 8,000 meters above sea level, only one-third of the oxygen normally present remains. Climbers require oxygen bottles due to the low atmospheric pressure at this extreme altitude. And even with oxygen, they face a high risk of cerebral or pulmonary edema, which is excess accumulation of fluid in the brain and lungs, which may prove fatal. Survival is key. A little under 4,500 people have climbed Mount Everest from the Nepal side alone, which is also referred to as the South Coal. And out of nearly 250 climbers and Sherpas who have died, a majority of them, nearly 200, have done so right here at the death zone. 
but will the Indian Army's Team Everest even manage to come this far this time? The team prepares to fly from Kathmandu to Lukla, which is the gateway to the Everest region. But the flight has been delayed due to bad weather at Lukla. Right now, the airport is closed in Lukla due to bad weather. Like, uh, weather means actually it's the wind. So when it's a vast wind, we cannot go to Lukla. After six long hours of waiting, Major Jamwal and his team are finally asked to board the flight to Lukla. My name is Edi Sherpa. I'm a captain and I've been flying since uh, 18 years. Uh, regarding the Lukla airport, it is known as a very dangerous airport in the, in the world. And we have the uh, Lukla, the landing is only one way. And once you come in for the landing, you have to land. Surrounded by high mountains, Lukla serves as an entry into the Saga Martha region. It is not a motorable town, but remains a popular destination for trekkers from across the world. We are moving to Fardin, sir, and everything okay, sir. The journey on foot begins from Lukla to Namchi, and this steep slope walk will continue for nine long hours. As the height increases with every step, these 30 climbers from the Indian Army, along with the NDTV crew, will have a first glimpse of what lies ahead. After a one-night halt at Fakting, the team will resume their journey to Namche Bazaar. Snowy morning. It's a very good misty morning. Uh, Namche Bazaar, as you know, it's at a height of 3440 meters. Namche Bazaar is uh, the administrative headquarter of the Kumbu region. It is also the entry point for the Sagarmata National Park. There are about 100 odd houses here. You get just about everything here. place in particular we get like really good steaks uh, this is called the international footrest lodge other than that all your supplies can be uh, restored here this is also called the Wi-Fi village uh, you can also rent a lot of mountaineering equipment here for very cheap and uh, in case your sleeping bag is not warm enough you can always exchange it and get a better one here From Namche, we started our journey to Gyangboche. It was around uh, four hour journey. Gyangboche Monastery is a very famous monastery. All lamas, they prayed for us, prayed for our safety. From Tengbache Monastery, the team tracks to Dingbache, and then to Lo Buche, which is at the height of 4,000 meters. Their next destination, after several night halts, will be Everest Base Camp. We reached uh, Base Camp somewhere in an evening. Uh, it was a fantastic uh, feeling because you can see a, almost a flat area on glacier and you can see all yellow, blue, pink color tents on the glacier. That was a great feeling over there. Snow-capped mountains, scattered tents with fluttering Buddhist prayer flags welcome the Indian Army to Everest Base Camp. Oh, my God. 
The valley is also a melting pot for international climbers. This will be home for Major John Wall and his boys for the coming weeks, or that's what they believe. They begin their stay by hoisting the Indian flag and setting up tents for the long haul ahead.